This week on Two Bears, One Cave. Even though when I came in, I trashed the jukebox selection. I just scanned a couple of the songs, and I was like, I rock the Casbah. What's going on here? <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> oh, oh, don't tell Christine. <laughs> my favorite part, I'm sorry, of the last few minutes, though, yeah. is that you've very kind of like diplomatically said, yeah. Bert's a fucking retard. And I don't have an idea yet. And he goes, that's right. You can just give me a hand job. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Satva. S A A T V A dot com slash the shit. That's right. That's the URL. They gave us the opportunity to pick our own URL. And I said, these mattresses are the shit. And we would like that to be the URL. And when you go to Satva dot com slash the shit, you get $200 off any mattress of your choice. I think that's a great deal. Why? Because you deserve to sleep on a high quality mattress. If you're not sleeping on one, you you know it. Maybe you've gotten used to it and you should stop. You should stop. You deserve to sleep comfortably, deeply, and on a great product with incredible customer service. And that all happens at Sattva. Trust me, I've been sleeping on this, their products for over 10 years. They're the best. S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit. Get yourself a mattress. Great news, everyone. Bird isn't here. Um, <laughs> usually you have to sit through someone's buffoonery talking all their nonsense. And luckily for all of us, he has something called intestinal cysts. So he's getting those addressed. Whoa. I know. But the great news is that in his place is somebody who you actually want to hear speak. Give it up for Colin Quinn, everybody. Woo! Thank man. you. Yeah. I'm so excited Thanks, you're here, Tom. man. This yeah. is awesome that you're here, dude. Yeah. We um, usually don't get good comics. So <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> uh, you're in town. You're doing the mothership. I'm doing the mothership. You're um, experiencing Austin. I know, I know you're looking at real estate. You're probably going to buy a place. Um, No, not <laughs> since uh, Tim Dillon fled. <laughs> Tim Dillon fled and then came back. Oh, he did? He came back. <laughs> he fucking by the way he hosed me that. that motherfucker he did he so he moves here first and i go right. i go hey man so how is it like because i'm looking this is yeah. a couple of years ago and he goes it's amazing it's great you're gonna love it it's, it's awesome gives me the whole pitch and I'm, I'm saying he's like the reason but he did do a convincing thing of course i moved here like six months later, I'm like, how's it going? He's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I go, why? He goes, there's like one sushi place. I got to get out of here. And he fucking fails. <laughs> That's really funny. But then he's like, then he, I don't know. He has like six houses now. So Yeah, uh, he does. He's yeah. got one in New York and Long Island. Yeah. I mean, he's just, uh, you He's know. got one in Europe. He's got, he's like, He does, yeah. Yeah. He's doing all right. Um, but this is like a real treat because like I said, we usually have morons and you're here and you actually are, you got your, your whole you know, you are the person who, like everybody, we all, whether you like it or not, we all, you're this person who I would be nervous to do stand-up in front of. Like, if we were doing uh, uh, a set tonight, I would look at my set list, and I would be like, and then I would look at you, and I'd be like, I can't do this. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because. Because I'm wanna, a judgmental person? You're judgmental. Um, you're a harsh critic. No, it's just because you. there are comics where you go, like, if you feel like something is like, eh, that'll get a laugh, but it's not solid you right. go i am not doing that in front of him <laughs> well yeah but i mean i don't look i never my what i judge people on nowadays at least uh -huh. i mean not that I, I judge people on there's two things i hate the most tell me i hate false humility where a bad example would be somebody going and i mean i'm ugly and it's like you're not ugly right right you're right. good looking right right you know i like Real assessments of how you look. You know what I mean? They might say, what about ugly people that think they're good looking? That's another weird thing. It doesn't That's, bother me. Yeah. Right. That's not because- It's diluted, but it doesn't bother me. Right. You know, you just feel like, ooh. Um, but I hate false humility, which is a big thing. Yes. But people are pretending to be, you know. And I hate pandering slash scolding. I guess it's sort of a lecture pander combination. Uh -huh. And you know, that, that style of, that school. Yes. Those two drive me crazy. And there's people doing both of those things quite a bit. Yeah. I did. I actually stopped somebody one time, a, a, a woman, a female comic, who was like, her. she was on stage, and one of her jokes, she was like, someone said to me, what are you, a model? And I was like, blah, blah, blah. And I had to, I when she got off, I go, by the way, you can't do that. 
And she was like, well, I go, because you're too good looking. I go, it's actually, you're oh. not even average looking. Right. I go, people are, think that you could be, this is absurd. Right. I, I couldn't even help myself to tell her. I was like, you can't do that. It yeah. doesn't work. You're, you're, you don't get that one. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. The pandering, though, is... Oh, it's just infuriating. <laughs> so that's really what bugs me the most. You know what I mean? I know people do whatever they do. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, sure. But certain things just inflame you in a certain way. And it's the real, you know, kind of... I use, I'll use i use the word, even though I'm bird seed, you probably never heard it, cloying that I don't like. Bird doesn't know that word. No, bird I, doesn't know it. No, no, no. The cloying is... It irks you. I love Bert. You know, Bert was doing that tour last year. Yeah. And they said, Bert wants you to come and do a couple of guest spots on the tour. Yeah. And my manager, my agent, they're both like, Bert wants you to come. These are great tours. I go, I'm not going to do Bert's. Look, here's the thing about comedy. I love Bert. <laughs> yeah. But I'm yeah. saying, it's like anything else. Not everybody has the same audience. No, they don't. You know what they I mean? Don't. That's yes. just, nobody even thinks about this. Like, no. hey, you're exposed to a different audience. Yeah. An audience is going to be like, first of all, they probably have a vague idea who I am. They're not interested. I'm not into Everybody go their way, separate way. You know what I mean? So when yeah. you see Bert, yeah. tell him, thank you. Stop making offers. It's, I'm not going to be saying no the rest of my life. <laughs> By the way, just so you know, I have rejected everything he's ever. His, 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 and then he'll be like, bad. he goes, bad. dude, you know we have the same audience, right? And I go, no, we fucking don't. No, we don't. He op, he was he talked about his fucking cruise his his Bert cruise and he was like the cruise I go I go can I tell you something he goes don't worry I already told them not to send you an offer I go you could send me the gross of the cruise the entire cruise yes. and I would turn it down I mean I love it yeah. I love it but it's just there's different things going on there you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, that's a nice way of saying yeah, it yeah but I'm there just are saying different things going yeah. on there and yeah. it's like it's just everyone's got their you know, everybody's got this idea yeah. that like all comedy is I know. an audience. My favorite part, I'm sorry, of the last few minutes though, yeah. is that you've very kind of like diplomatically said, Bert's a fucking retard. No, that, I'm not. No, no, <laughs> kind of, yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of no, that. he's dumb that he doesn't know what cloying is. But <laughs> look, but I mean, no, I'm saying, no, I'm yeah. literally saying yeah. that m most people in the industry don't seem to understand that there's different audiences for different comedians. Agents don't. That's Agents, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. They think exposure. It's not. I you've got to have different audiences. It's, it's not one big thing, you know. No, a thousand. And none of us are like none of us are above. None of. I'm not doing fake humility. None of us right. are above taking money for things. But there right. are times when you've done stand up long enough where you get an offer for something and it's like I'm not shaking my head at the money, no. but you go, is this? Is the exchange of this money worth what I know this experience will be? Yeah. And then you go like, these are not equal. That's you know? 100% right. Yeah. And, and you can't believe you're not going to take the money. That's, that's the part. But you're like, damn it, damn it. And you yeah. keep, and when you, but the problem is when you do take the money, that month beforehand is ruined. Yeah, it is. Your whole life is ruined because yeah. your stomach hurts because you're like, I know I'm going to this thing. It's not going to be pretty. And I'll and, and I'll I'm go ahead it. and I'll go ahead and say and when I did the Home Builders Association of Northern Kentucky, it was a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's one of the most horrific, traumatizing experiences of my life. Why? Well, that's one of the greatest one of the greatest comedy audiences. Northern Kentucky contractors. Can I tell you too? It's almost like this was more than ten years ago, and it's almost like I knew when the call came, like because I was dealing with the person yes. and it was a referral from a family member Ooh. and she goes i saw it's even worse because then they get the word back they get the yeah. she goes i saw you're so funny and i was like hey i just wanted to you know do you do you think that this crowd and i know i know <laughs> what the answer is right but right I, I want it to be like it's going to be great she's like it's going to be great and i go okay okay and then i you know i, I work out the the details and I go to this place and it's in Covington, Kentucky, right across from Cincinnati. Sure. It's at a country club. And I walk into the room and I see the people and I'm like, I mean, I don't even have a fan base, but I'm like, this definitely is not them. Right. And then I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And then she's like, you ready to go? And I go, uh, can I get a microphone? And she was like, yeah, we'll, we'll get one up there. Just, just go ahead and get started. And I was like, Oh, oh my no. God. Oh no. And so 
one of them just went up like th- like you know hey everybody put yeah put that down ready ready for your entertainment and they go tom come on up here and i go up there and i'm like this like you know hands free and i'm like how's everybody doing and they're just you know yeah and this is all the, this is also their celebration so part of you feels like i am i get that this is your night you're supposed to be enjoying your yes. night yes and then as i'm talking someone hands me the mic turn, I turn oh this is better and the sound comes on this is better right and then i just see a guy and i'm doing the act that i know i only have one fucking right, thing right, i can right. do right right and it's just it's the worst. And then as I get off, I was like, uh, I I'm I know that didn't work. She was like, Yeah, that didn't that wasn't good. And I yeah. was like, Thank oh, you. Oh no, I've had yeah. horrifying what I finally learned about those kind of shows, those yeah. whatever they're called, is I always I always do this. I ask anybody. I leave, I go a day early. I go through all their seminars. Seriously? Yep. I get up there. I just did one about a month and a half ago in South Carolina. I literally my I'll sit there with a podium with my laptop and spend the, the, I just did one. And I'll go over the speakers they sat through for the past day. I'll sit at all the seminar and I'm writing notes and I trash every speaker, everything that was said. Oh. I kill, but I mean kill for 20 minutes, but it's only 20 minutes. Yeah. And then I go in my act and they're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, And they just work the crowd. Yeah. Because they, like you said, they're there. This is a, this is their business. Yeah. They don't want a stand up show. Right. No. They're not no. there. They're there to talk to each other. So the only thing. Talk about is, Pete from fucking accounting. And, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So either you work the crowd, and even that is barely works, or do like the stuff that I do. Yeah, I actually go bother. Yeah. But I'm looking, I'm not even looking at them. I'm looking at the laptop, and it works so great. Dude, so. But then the rest of it's not, you know. That is an amazing, that's an amazing tactic. And also, it, it, it shows that like, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. If you get something like that, you you still got to do the work. Like you got to do the work you do the if work. you want it to go. You if know, you if want you want it to, want go it to be, up. yeah. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, guys. Remember the days when you were always ready to go. Depending on your age, you might have to do some serious math right now to figure out when that was. Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Go to bluechew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The best part, it's all done online. No visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And you are rock hard and ready to go. I love the fact that I'm engorged with blood in a way I can only describe as the teen years. This is not a hardness I've felt in a long time. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BEARS at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code BEARS to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Do you constantly search for meaningful gifts that your loved ones will actually use and love? The Skylight Frame is a touchscreen digital picture frame you can send photos to straight from your phone and they appear in seconds. It's the perfect gift, great for spouses, parents, new parents, grandparents, or your children. It's personal and something they're going to love. You can easily send photos from your phone to frame with the free Skylight app or email. The frames come in two sizes, 10 and 15 inches, and are displayed in HD resolution. You can set it up in portrait or landscape, and the larger 15-inch frame can be mounted on your wall. The frames also come in a variety of colors, like black, silver, white, and gold. As a special limited time offer for our listeners, get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash bears. To get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com slash bears. Old people are just mesmerized by this stuff. If you really want to freak them out, get them one of these. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash bears. Did you, I, this just popped into my head. I wasn't thinking about this today, but did, wasn't there a story about you performing at like 
De Niro's birthday or something? Oh my God! I mean, it's my it's my my most uh, beloved uh, saddest story. So it was this thing where De Niro, his wife, calls me up. This is no matter how long you've been in business, every mistake in comedy I made. Uh -huh. She didn't make it. Yeah, like that lady with the mic. This was me doing that. Right. So she goes, De Niro, Bob's having a 60th birthday party. You do a De Niro impression, which I really didn't, but I, maybe I did a half-ass one. But she goes, could you come down and just do the impression? So you ever see Ralph Cramer when he goes, I'm going straight for the $99,000 answer. You ever watch the honeymoon? Mm -hmm. I go, I'll do better than that. I'll do an act. And even she goes like this, like, oh, um, all right. I mean, we just want the impression. I go, I'll do. Trust me. I'm afraid, you know. She's like, all right. <laughs> So right away, so I write an act, a 20-minute act. It's all on paper. You can't memorize an act in sure. three days of 20 minutes specific to one person. I write it all out about De Niro. But it's got, it's, it's, even when I look back on it, uh, I go show up. There's Billy Crystal, Robin Williams, Whoopi Goldberg. There's Erwin Winkler, this big producer of all the movies. There's Chaz Palminteri, there's Christopher Walken. All these guys are there, you know, all these Big names. Yeah. And this is and at a restaurant? or like At a restaurant okay. called Le Cirque, the fanciest yeah. restaurant in New York at the yeah. time. And it's right across from St. Patrick's Cathedral. And so once again, now part one mistake, she told you to do the impression, get out. Right. And I got to be a big shot. But in my mind, I'm like, you know what? This is my time. I was doing great at stand-up. I was feeling my oats. I was like, this is going to finally put me with Scorsese, De Niro, and these guys are going to go, this is the this is the guy missing link yeah. for our Later, why don't we know about this guy? You know, because I'm from New York. And I'm yeah. just like, in my mind, in the back of my mind, it was my, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then I go up there. She goes, I'll introduce you. No, don't introduce me. Don't introduce me. Don't. I got it. Well, what am I, stupid? Yeah. I mean, of all, and she, I go, I'll just go up. So I have to interrupt dinner. They're eating. I lay out my notes. I get the mic. And Robin Williams, who was there, goes to me, yeah. He goes, suddenly... I'm eating and I look up and I see you talking to a microphone. I go, what's Conley Quinn doing? He's a comedian yeah. and he's wondering what's going on. So I start, it, so I start getting the crowd. I go, hi, how you doing? Um, uh, I'm not really a friend of De Niro. Again, the crowd's right. like, why would a non-friend be here at his birthday? Yeah. And I go, but I see these movies and I make a few roast jokes. So I go, hey, how did you prepare? You always prepare for your movies. How did you prepare for whatever movie it was by looking in front of the mirror and apologizing to the audience for wasting our money. God's like, whoa. And I go, hey, you gained weight for Raging Bull and you put on some weight for uh, uh, Untouchables. And, and I, gave, I said, maybe you're not really an actor. You're just a fat fuck. <laughs> oh. So crowd's turning on me. <laughs> so I'm bombing. Like that was the, my first page was all roast jokes. Yeah, sure. I had four pages. So I do roast jokes. So then the crowd's turning. So then I go, I start freewheeling because I got Chris Walken and those guys were over there. And I go, hey, I just stopped playing because I didn't know they'd be there, but I'm like, get off De Niro. I go, hey, Harvey Keitel, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you uh, make yourself at home? Take your pants off. <laughs> Crowd's just looking at me. He's looking at me. I go, Chris Walken, why are you here? You should be doing a cameo in an unwatchable independent movie. <laughs> Crowd's just looking at me. So now I know I'm bombing with the roast jokes. Uh -huh. So I go into... You're like, let me switch it up. Yeah, I try to switch it up. So <laughs> yeah. I go to my next page. Me, I'm, I'm shuffling papers. Oh, no. So that oh, was no. such good. I'm telling you, this crowd is dead silent. I interrupted a meal of laughs. At, you know what I mean? Because they're... Yeah. Like the Kentucky thing. Yeah. They're at their party, too. Yeah, yeah that's their party. Yeah. 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 I'm not even his friend. They don't know me. So I start going into this other... Uh, this horrible story of my friend who... <laughs> I'm embarrassed to even tell my friend who he died, but before, but we, he had seen Taxi Driver. And when I, we were growing up, and he started describing Taxi Driver to me and how, him, you know, how strange it was that he was mentioning Taxi Driver. But then at the end, I go, and then he died. And it was like this, <laughs> it was terrible. And then are you seeing Bob just like, what's that? This, no. Is he like, Bob's like, Bob's like looking like he's, like he's going, you know, like, he, keep going like he's trying to support because <laughs> yeah. you know he's horrified <laughs> people are like muttering like you know it's getting ugly you know yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then people are like ah, like a couple of you know ladies are yelling out and shit. then I start doing especially during the roast jokes you know and then I start doing this other thing where I'm doing like scenes from I can't even remember I, I'm thank god I don't have those papers 
because if I did, I'd have to, I'd have to perform it again. You have to, you have to. But it was so bad, and it just ended so ugly. And I left, and my suit was soaked yeah. with sweat. Yeah. And I walk outside, and Robin Williams came out, and he goes, "Conley," because I knew him a little bit, and he goes. Oh, he's just left. He goes, oh, you know. And I was like, <laughs> look, I had another gig that night. It was kind of rainy. Yeah. So I have a, this new cashmere sweater on a hanger. And I go, I don't And the cashmere sweater flew off the hanger and went in the gutter. And a cab ran it over in the rain. <laughs> and he just cried with laughter. He couldn't believe it. Dude, okay. First of all, that's that's fucking amazing. When you bomb, this is like universal for, for a comedian, like in, especially an event like that. You know, there's the internal... Yes. Like just shame. Yes. Usually you want to be be alone for a moment, but then the thing is you always want to, you have to tell somebody, right? Yeah. Do you remember who you told first? Like, Well, I mean. Well, obviously Robin walks Robin out. Williams but I mean, out. was there somebody else who you went to, one of your friends right away and you're like. Well, I had, luckily I did have a show that night. Oh, so you could wash it off kind of, So right? I washed it off to a degree, but, yeah. and then years later I'm like, oh, I make that story into more than it was. De Niro's like. He's done a hundred million things. He doesn't remember that bullshit. So I saw him outside the cellar when he was doing that uh, horrendous comedy movie, you know. <laughs> and he's there, and he's with the wife, and Jim Norton is there. Uh huh. And so we're talking for a couple of minutes outside the cellar. De Niro, you know. And then Jim Norton goes, "Hey, remember the time he bombed at your birthday party?" And both of their faces. Jim even said he said they were so dark. They darkened. And it must have been like the ba- like this thing they hated that they never speak of. His it face. changed the whole energy. We just walked away. <laughs> so he definitely remembers that. Do you remember that? Yeah. I mean, him right. and the wife both. Sure. Oh. And then did she ever talk to you again? Did she ever? Because she's the one that asked you to do no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> I never I never would have asked her to talk to me. It uh, was the worst. Carson Palmer <clears throat> was a quarterback for the Bengals. Yeah, I know. So... Um, they know him from Cincinnati and his, uh, his team reaches out and they're like, we have a big private event in uh, Orange County. He's from California. Um, we want to, you know, possibly work with the Cincinnati guy. Can we come see you? So they, they, they basically, his team comes and watched me at the Irvine improv. Great show. Like great show. This is like, again, I don't know, like 10 years ago. So they're like, they pulled me aside after, and they're like, "Hey, we're doing this, uh, this uh, private event on you know next Tuesday at this place. We'd love for you to host it." And I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude, that'd be awesome!" <laughs> and they're like, it's gonna "Be like a bunch of NFL players." I was like, "Oh, this is the shit." And they're like, "You know, you're a Cincinnati guy. He'll he'd love that." I was like, "Great." And they're like, "And then the next day, there's a, a golf outing." And I was like, I'm not really a golf. They're like, believe me, you want to come. It's going to be fucking fun. And I was like, okay, cool. So the night of the event, it's at this like very chic uh, sushi place where there's a restaurant in the front. And then in the back room, it's like to throw a party. So there's only room. There's only tables around the side. The center is empty. There's a big table that's in front of it sushi dj playing over here and when you walk in it looks like a hot person's party you know what i mean like you're like right. oh somebody yeah. who is hot yes. is having a party everyone all the girls are just like yes and they're orange county like there's they're smoking hot yeah and i'm seeing nfl players left and right <laughs> walking around i'm like oh this is dope dude and then they're like all right like 15 minutes and i was like and then i go what's the thing they're like so you do you know you go up there do like 15 minutes do your thing 15 20 minutes then like you'll bring up this guy you'll bring up that guy and then you bring up carson and then then you kind of just wrap it up and then uh tomorrow there's the golf thing and i go oh okay and they go i go what i go so the golf thing and they go look the only way you're not going to the golf thing is if you're not invited to the golf thing and that's not happening and i was like okay so i go up there and here's the thing. When you walk into a, a packed room, it's loud, right? Yes. When I grab the mic, none, none of the volume in the room changes. Like, right. you go like, oh, we're, start, like, we're starting yeah. now. You start tapping yeah. it. I go, we're starting. Hello? And then I look at the guy, and he was like, and I go, what do you mean? I go, <laughs> like, no, no one is listening. Not like a few. Right. They're still like, ah, oh, you're having the party. So I was like, Hello? I start to say shit. I'm like, you guys are fucking rude, right? And 
I'm thinking that oh, no. it'll gather, it'll no. just garner attention. No. Dude, nothing changes. So after a minute, I'm looking at him. I'm like, I don't, because you know, they're like, it's your, it's your thing. I go, well, you have to like, it's got to, we got to stop. Yes. So I finally am like, all right. I go, all right, you guys aren't going to listen, blah, blah, blah. I just, I start doing an act. I don't even, I'm not doing like riff stuff. I just right. start doing an act. There's like four people here that are facing me. So I just perform to them. And as I'm performing to them, one of them is a kid. And, and I'm like, I'm going through the act and I'm like doing stuff that I'm like, ah, that's probably not for kids, but you know, he's here. And at one point I'm, he, I'm like, do you know who I am to the kid? And he's like, <laughs> and I go, I'm Brett Favre. And, <laughs> and he's like, you see his face change? Like, he's like, <gasps> like that. And I was uh, like, yeah, I'll sign. Like, so he believes it, you know, uh, like he's not getting the joke yeah. of it. And, and. And so I finally, I'm like, wow, this is, it's not even, it doesn't feel like regular bombing because there's still nobody. It's like I try to do stand up at a, at a, uh, like a disco, like at right, like a right. nightclub. Yeah. Like there's like almost like there's music on, except there's no music on. Yeah. So when I finally, I'm like, I turn to the guy, I'm like, dude, I don't know what you want me to do. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I bring someone else up. Someone else comes up. It's the same. And when I finally go, ladies and gentlemen, Carson Palmer, they all stop. And they look at the stage, dead silent. And I'm like, this is amazing. Wow. Like, they all, like 250 people just stop. Wow. I bring him on stage. He says some bullshit. He gets off. I'm like, oh, you know, continue your night. And I'm like, sour about it. I'm like, this of course. is. Of course. I'm in the bathroom and like this uh, running back for the Bengals at the time. I forget his name. He goes, damn, that was rough for you, huh? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was, he was like, how'd you get, he was like, what's that feel like? I'm like, well, no one was listening. I go, so it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a regular bomb. Right. And then I'm like, all right, well, at least I got, I got through this in some way. It feels terrible. Yeah. And then they were like, uh, yeah, we'll let you know about the golf thing. <laughs> I'm like, it's tomorrow though. <laughs> They're like, yeah, someone will reach out. Oh my and God. I, and I didn't get invited. I didn't get to they go. They disinvited they you. They disinvited me. From so the somebody golf. was listening, but you were insulting them. Yeah. They were like, no, no, this guy's not coming. Yeah. yeah. We've all been there in the bad seat, you know, like being smushed in the middle seat of a station wagon on a long trip or the last row of a cramped plane. That's the absolute worst. Or you get in the car with somebody and you're just kind of cramped up. You feel it in your neck, you feel it in your shoulders, and you can't wait for the ride to end so you can finally stretch out. Lexus's new TX is a three row SUV that considers every single passenger, no matter where they sit. The new TX features comfortable leather captain's chairs and a spacious third row. They've got leg room, elbow room, cargo room, and there are cup holders and USB chargers for all. Finally, a three-row SUV where everybody wins. The first ever Lexus TX. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. But I mean, they, it's set up for failure. That was a failure setup. Yeah. A lot of these, a lot of these things. I'll tell you the best thing, which. Again, I've done enough enough of these gigs where I know is when, believe it or not, when you're performing in the morning. Mm. You'd think that would be the worst time. It's the best time. Is it really? Yes. Because they're there, they're bored by the speakers. You get up, you're trashing everybody that has been boring them this yeah, whole time. Sure. And they love it. And you and they're not drunk. Yeah. Once they start drinking, drinking it's an changes August everything. party. They're talking to each other. I haven't seen this person in years. Talking to these people, oh my god, they're not in the mood for this stuff. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I feel like all the years of like the the, the six seven show club gigs has really made a disdain for alcoholics and like or like for drunk behavior. Yes, yes. You know I mean? We're like, I hate them. I can be in a non performance setting, and when someone's drunk, I just I just start to go like, I just want to get the fuck out of here. You know, like that loud, obnoxious shit. Yeah, because you perform to it, and you realize there's like there's almost no way to defeat it at a well, certain point. Well, even the Lauren Bobert thing the other day. As much as I respect her giving the guy a hand job and him feeling up, I I respect yeah. that. But <laughs> but the fact that they're in a play. And instead of watching the play, they're like, ha, ha, ha. it just reminds me of everything I hate about in comedy. Drugs. Yeah, yeah. Clubs, yeah. those idiots that are like, hey, go outside. What are you doing? Yeah. 
The show's getting ruined for everybody around Where you. Where was this? I didn't, I didn't even know this. Oh, this is like a Beetlejuice. They were doing like the, the, the musical Beetlejuice. Uh-huh. So they're doing a play. Yeah. So apparently she goes in there with the guy, you know, they're vaping. Pull they're that doing, up. But they're doing all the things that you hate in an audience member. Wow. So they're, that's her and that's him. At the at the edge here? Right. Yeah. And so see, so they're getting along good, you know. Yeah. So the lady behind her, she had a conflict with the lady behind her because she was vaping. You're not supposed to vape at the show. Hey, oh, can, here she oh, goes. Yeah. Can you not vape? Goes, can you not vape? And she's like, yeah, give me a lot. Yeah. Now here they go. She's like, taking pictures at the show. Oh, you're watching her play. Everybody else, look at everybody else. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's super disrespectful. And now. The dick comes out? No, she, she grabs his dick, but it oh. doesn't come out. Yeah. Look, I respect that part. Maybe they're not showing that. Oh, they didn't show that part. Now they asked her to leave. Oh. Her and the guy. He's grabbing his head. She's oh. grabbing his dick the whole time. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. But it just reminded me of all the things yeah, of in course. the audience where you're like, that's because that couple. This is the equivalent of, um, hey, could you, uh, could you keep it down? And they're like, I'm talking to my daughter right now. Like where they tell you what, and you're like, yeah, I don't care. That the, who you're talking, you're talking in the showroom, you know, like, I mean, I, I've had, I've had people in the front row be like, we're talking about our plans for later. And you're like, oh, that's great. Like, I, with the, but your face yeah. and attitude is exactly how they are. Yeah. That's exactly what they do. They look at you like, They're matter of fact about like, it. And how like, dare you? You see what, you know, what's going on here now? Now he understands. And then they're like, and, and they're so <laughs> entitled. It's such, it's all entitlement, you know? But it's also, let me explain this. I'm si- I've been, this has been a bane of my existence since I started this business. If you went to any other business and you, t- and the owner watched four people Ruin the night for 200 of his customers to the point where most of them won't ever come back. They would be yanked out and thrown out. Yeah. In comedy, they're like, hey, let them let's see where they go. Because yeah. half the owners have the same mentality as those A thousand percent. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's so crazy. It's so <laughs> crazy. I mean, I, I I remember one time this at a club where the guy was like, the, the crowd was so disrespectful to the feature. Yes. And there's this thing about you, too, where you get like protective, right, of your- yes. And I was like, hey, what the fuck to the club? And they're like, you know, we, uh, it's a customer. And I was like, what, what are you doing? Like, That's a customer, yeah. Yeah, like they go, well, you know, he, and then they wanted to fire my feature act for shitting on them. And I was like, yeah. I go, you get rid of him. I'm not coming yeah. for the rest of the shows. Yeah. And they were like, well, you know, and it's because the guy, he just cared about food and beverage. He didn't care about what happens on stage. He was like, those people bought, food yeah and but drinks. they're so dumb because in the long run their clubs close because uh, 150 people are not enjoying the show they haven't heard these they people all the time they don't get it it's unbelievable though to yeah because if it was any other invo- if it was a restaurant even yeah they'd be like these four people are ruining the night for everybody yeah. get them out yeah yeah of course any other business yeah well then then in the club they uh they also could be like super insane people in there and they go we're just laughing and you're like, well, you're not though. No, you're, you're not. They're all, they're laughing. Yes. You're doing a whole other thing. Oh, it's infuriating. It's really crazy. And that, that remind. by the way, because the, the, the Broadway thing we just saw there, uh, you are more dialed into that because you actually do those shows. I mean, you perform not just stand up in clubs, but you do one man shows. I do theaters and theaters, one man shows. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, but it's the same, it's the same thing. With less of that. Yeah, right. But I'm saying there is, everybody kind of knows that when you walk into a theater, a Broadway show, a musical, there's a different level of decorum, respect that you're supposed to watch the show with. Sadly, As, by the way, yeah. it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. Stand-up should be getting the same respect. It should respect. be. I should be. But, and I'll tell you what the problem is. I figured this all out. It's because your table is, you're facing each other. Yes. It's crazy. A theater, you're facing straight ahead. Yeah. Here's the show. Your tables face each other. That's a nonverbal way of saying, yeah, the show's part of it. And part yeah. of it. <laughs> well, there and there are actual clubs where the you see some people watch the stage like this. Yeah. Go, oh, it's nice. Like, yeah. Let me get one of those chicken fingers. Yeah. Yeah, it's really crazy. Well, they, one of the reasons the Comedy Cellar has always been my favorite and it was such a great club yeah. is because <laughs> they this is back in the 80s. They said, if you're a table of more than, I think, five or six, 
we separate you. And they said that in the 80s. They go, and people were like, well, we're together. They go, we don't care. You're separated. If you want to come, if you don't want to come, that's fine. That is amazing. That's, that's the way amazing. Do it. Yeah, my all time biggest bomb was I was booed off stage was with uh, Christmas parties because it was groups yes. of like 40 and 50, like all in sections. Yeah. And that, and I, when I talked, it was we, me and the owner talked about it at length because we'd both never seen anything like it. Right. But I was like, one of the contributing factors is that these were mobs. They were, it wasn't yeah. random. It was, there was 50 people that knew each other here. Yes. And 50 people that I go. So once one of them was like, I don't like this, they all just kind of got together. You no, know? it is, it yeah. is an interesting, weird uh, mob mentality mob thing that happens, mob rule. Yeah. And um, it's the internet's like that too. And, um, but yeah. Yeah, the internet is, is exactly, it's yeah. a great. Now, yeah. how did you go? Because I remember, you know, dude, it's so crazy, like how long I've seen you in different things. Like I remember you on MTV. Um, you were just a little boy, weren't you? I was kind of a little boy. And also, which is sad for like, I, you know, this is old man shit to say, but I'm actually like, I get some things you get bummed, you go, you don't understand how great it was. Right. So like, some, like MTV was the coolest place in the world, period. If you were a teenager, like it, it was, it was like the, the hosts, you, you just waited for these cool music videos that were so, you know, sometimes they were deliberately bad. Sometimes they were accidentally bad. Sometimes they were the coolest thing you ever fucking thing. And you'd sit around, round the clock. If you had any moment, you would just put on MTV yep. and you'd be seeing the best music, the best video. It was just fucking like- It was in the background at all times. It was the epicenter of pop culture. And like, you know, like, and coolness, like that, it was it all It was, there. even though when I came in, I trashed the jukebox selection. You did? Yeah. I just <laughs> scanned a couple of the songs and I was like, I rock the Casbah, what's going on here? <laughs> but, but I understand now that was your childhood. And it's Actually, very that's my wife. <laughs> uh oh, don't tell Christine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure you cut this. Oh boy. And send it to her. She's going to go nuts. Yeah. That's her problem. Um, <laughs> You got trashed by Colin Quinn. So, uh, no, but so you're there. But MTV was, yeah, MTV was amazing. It was the shit, dude. MTV, I, I've told this before, but we, <laughs> me and Ken, and he came to me and he goes, he goes, he was out, I forget where he was. I was in New York. We were like very parochial at the time. Yeah. Just, you know, and so he goes, I was just out somewhere. And he goes, mobs of kids came up to me. He's at a college or something. He goes, mobs of kids came up to me. And I just was half paying attention. But I had a gig the a couple of days later at Missouri, in the middle of Missouri. I still remember Dennis Weaver Drive. You get off the plane, Dennis Weaver Drive. I don't know what school that is, but uh -huh. so I get off and they're driving me to the gig. And my act, I was only doing it for like two and a half years. So my whole act was like, hey, if you take the six train, the four train actually, right? And everybody's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it was very local. Yeah. And I see this college and I go, oh, shoot. What else is here? I'm going to do comedy. I've never done anything but a little club. Because there's a line of 3,000 people. So I go, what else is going on tonight? And they go, ha, ha, ha. And I go, what? And I just forgot it. I go up. They're there to see me. Wow. I'm petrified. Now, luckily, I just worked the crowd yeah. at that point. I was just like, I'm just going to work this crowd. Because little kids are there with their parents. But it was 3,000 people. And as you say, MTV was so respected we would go to Florida, like spring break, NBC, all these camera people, these kids didn't care. When MTV showed up, they all were on their best behavior. They wanted to be on. Yeah, that it really was like, and the thing about it too at the time, like, you know, it, it's become like, hey, do you want to see like six drunk fucking, uh, right, you right. know, half hot bodies? Hang right. I, I don't know. It's just like, it's this weird reality thing now. Right. But whatever kind of music you liked, you had a moment. That's the thing about it is that That's right. you it was like top forty stuff that was your thing you you would have it if you wanted like head headbanger yeah. metal shit rap like it all had its moment on the right. and you were just waiting for like whatever you wanted to see there but yeah. you did that that had to feel crazy but then I've always I always ask this whenever I meet anybody that um, works on the show because to me I guess I just feel like it has to be terrifying and maybe I'm wrong but to get a gig on SNL, like, is it so intimidating to start there? No, but I was older and I came in there as a writer, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was kind of a weird time. Like when I look back at those people from that, 
those years, it yeah. was amazing. Like Will Ferrell and Tina Fey. And yeah, Adam McKay. it's a great cast. These people are all like very big, you know what I mean? And Sherry O'Terry. I mean, Sherry O'Terry used to, I mean, Kill. in some Kill. ways, she really, her characters that first year yeah. imprinted in a way that was very important. And yeah. Lorne, Lorne knew it, even if we didn't. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, he'd keep- Sherry's great. He'd be right, right another cheerleader this week. Everybody's like, what? He already did that. He's like, he understood. Like, people want to grab onto something. But but anyway, so, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's one of these places that, you know, all the all the good things and all the bad things about it, yes. Yeah. It's all the way it is. But it's like every other job, except that it's this dream in comedy. But, right. But it's the same as any dynamic. People go, oh, there's a lot of uh, backstabbing. There was no more backstabbing there, in my opinion, than at any any job in entertainment history. job, yeah, any yeah. job anywhere, yeah, in a bar. But I'm just saying, it's I always use a bar as an example because I worked at restaurants, but yeah. but I'm saying any office is just the way it is, you know what I mean? And it wasn't overly, but it is the dream. So and and remember when when I was there, it was all the show was out to get canceled, yeah. So this whole new crew was kind of like. And everybody gets along, but you know, you get after a couple of years, you see. I mean, we saw each other every day for years, but it's like comedy. So if me and you are both hanging out in the comedy store, the cellar, uh, comedy mothership yeah. for months together, and then suddenly I'm doing another gig, and we know see each other for two years, yeah, and we saw each other every night, yeah, yeah. It's a weird business in it's that way. It's a weird, yeah, it is. Like you get. Your best friends, and then you're like, "Oh yeah, I just hang out with that guy. I haven't seen him in three years." And then the weird thing about that is that, like, you're you're working with each other, you're seeing each other at night, and then on the there is also the chance that like there's an off day, off night, and you're gonna call one of those people, and be like, "You want to go get something to eat?" Yeah. <laughs> and so like you're hanging out with them again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. But they say movies are like that. Like all the people that do movies. Oh yeah. They they fall in love. They have this thing. Everybody's best friends. I love that person. And then they never see him again. Yeah. I did a I did a I did a few small movies. Yeah. And what I got was that in that to the tenth like where everybody was so intensely like I love you. But like yes. But like like uh like genuine affection you yeah. know people would hug you and like hold on to you yes and then let's all exchange information yes and the thing is they're texting you while you're doing the movie yeah. and then the movie ends and you don't get any texts no <laughs> no and, and i'm again. the same way as them yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. i'm the same way but the worst is or the funniest i guess if you're in the early sh part of the movie so you're there for the first three weeks but they're shooting for two months yeah and two weeks, it's a love fest. Yeah. We love you. Oh, my God. Right. Everybody loves you. Then if you have one more day to come back, we have to go shoot near the yeah. end. I was like, hey. Yeah, how's it going, man? <laughs> yeah. You haven't met everybody else that we like more. It, should, all it here. just shows life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess a life. it's some life lesson there. It is kind of a life lesson. Yeah. I also think it's a big deal that you said that the, uh, the intimidation factor for getting an SNL gig has to go down once you're a more like you you're older. In other words, yes. if you get it at 22, that's got to be fucking blow blow you away. Yeah. yeah. But once you like have some chops or and like you also just have more life experience, it's a little more you're a little more grounded. Yeah, and and no, I wouldn't even know if I was more grounded, but I definitely when, being a writer there is a different animal too. When I was a writer there, it was a different animal. How long were you writing before you were on camera? About a year, a year and a half. Yeah. Okay. Did I mean, you I wrote, like doing that or no? I liked it, yeah. but I Oh, God, I used to get in arguments because I was always, you know, I mean, maybe it's just being a comedian, but I was always like, I know what's funny. Yeah. So, like, the guest host would be there, and I'd be like, you're saying that line wrong. But I I mean, I tried to be polite about yeah. it, but I was definitely saying it willfully. Yeah. Like, you know, writers have a certain couth. Yes. And directors. Yes. Where they treat performers a little bit delicately. Yeah. But when you're a performer, you're cocky, or at least I feel. Yeah. And you're like, hey. Um, I'm like a performer that. too, and that that dynamic doesn't work. No, they don't like you telling them, "Hey, that's wrong." And, you know, you could you do like just the pushy, the willfulness of my uh, interact, my connection with them. They don't like that shit. Yeah, that's for directors. That's why directors and writers are so talented. Sure, because they deal with performers. Yeah. without being pissing them off all the time. Sure, sure. Because, but would you? Would people actually? Snap back, like if you'd go like yeah. Chris yeah. Walken snapped at me once. He did. Yeah. It was it because of the birthday buddy. party? <laughs> was it was before the party? Uh, oh really? He was probably happy that yeah. I was bombing at that party. You said something like, "Do it like this." No, I just said, "Look, I'm." Um, I told you about that sketch. Yeah. 
so I started to describe the sketch I was going to pitch again. He goes, you told me already. I go, yeah, well, I'm telling you again because it seems like you forgot. He just looked at me with hate. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me like this. And a couple of people I had just th- those interactions with. Yeah. Who was, I asked Al Franken when he was here, who was the worst person you ever, who ever guest hosted at, like in your time there? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you my favorite first, okay. which is Sting. I love Sting. Really? And not just me. Everybody loves Sting. All the girls are in love with him. All the guys, even the guys who are like, uh, oh, Sting. Everybody loves Sting. That's the way it is. It's just the the aura, the 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 energy. He's he puts just out. the greatest connected guy. Like he talks to everybody. He's not trying to be charming. Yeah. He's not like I'm connecting with you. He's yeah. just like it's hard to describe. But yeah. it's like he and he and it, I mean, young women. They all loved him. Everybody loved him. Yeah. When I was there, I would say you know I had conflicts with. Um, I hate to say because Madeline Kahn died, but I had a little conflict with her. You know, I really loved her comedic thing but she took my sketch me and her had a little argument over my sketch really and then she ended up sabotaging it wait she was working there no she no. was just uh, the guest host and and you guys argued over the sketch she died. um we do, we argued over my sketch and then she i saw the look in her eyes and then she just she goes i know what i'll do it to this guy she was a real pro and she just did it uh just a beat off on each thing so that bombed at dress rehearsal and they you know they cut half the show at dress rehearsal <laughs> and she like she gave me a good lesson she's like oh you want to play games huh really and so we're, we're, had you been you've been butting heads during the like, yeah the, the, we butted heads a few times me and her wow yeah i was kind of a you know dick in certain ways as far well. as you know i was like you know i just thought my i thought my sketches were you know like from being a stand-up i'm like i say it this way you know i don't know what you're doing but it's, you know Oh my God, instead of, like writers have to be a little more, they have a, a even if it's fake, there's only, that's why you see showrunners become like, they, yeah, they yeah. because they let all the anger out for all the writers. Right, right. But writers have to be more subservient to the sure. performer to get them to do stuff the way they want them. You know? Yeah, but you're also, there's there are people who write who are just writers. But right, you you had the thing where you're like, I per, I am a performer. Exactly. Yeah, I came in there like we're equals, and it's yeah. like, no, you're not. Yeah, yeah. So you know, anybody else that memorably terrible? I mean, people always say Chevy, you know, but I was there when Chevy hosted, and I mean, he was crazy, but it was kind of funny. Like I didn't think it was. I mean, he was. You today, he, people would be horrified. I understand that, but at the give time, me an example. What's like? What was crazy about him? Like <laughs> he goes, like when he's people are pitching ideas. <laughs> and this is like around the room. So Lauren is talking to us and he's behind Lauren going like this the whole time. <laughs> Doing faces and making body like these weird things. And then one of the female writers goes, I don't have a uh, I don't have an idea yet. And he goes, That's right, you can just give me a hand job. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know but it was like trying to be funny but it's right, like yeah. it was kind of funny that's pretty funny man but i mean but it's just you know the, the difference is right now everyone would be like that is oh, yeah. Just, yeah but and he just and if he just did it to women that would be one thing but he was insulting everybody all the time really but it was kind of it was kind of funny the way he does it you yeah. know it's really uncalled for one time i was i was on the show and i was warming up the crowd beforehand and he just walked in and the crowd went crazy. Chevy Chase. Yeah. He walked in. He's like this. I'm warming up. And he just he says, just waves, waves. And they're all going nuts. And he goes, he leans into me. He goes, I just did that to fuck you up. And walked off. <laughs> That's pretty funny though, man. That's funny. It is funny. Yeah. Like I, the thing about, I don't know what this says about me, but all the things you're saying, like if I'm in that room, I have a smile. I'm in, I find it endearing. It is endearing. Yeah, yeah. But for, but he would all, <laughs> He would like screw up the sketches. Delivery. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but it is funny, but he's yeah. like a little kid. Yeah. One time I was at Aspen Comedy Festival, uh-huh. eight in the morning. Eight in the morning. Everyone's getting their cars to get out. It's the last day. Been there all week. And Chevy's there with his wife and his kids. He's a real family man too. Wife and his kids. And they 
cow the the guys at the valet guys had cowboy hats at Aspen at this hotel. He goes, who are you? Hop along, Cassie, give me that fucking thing. And he takes the hat and just starts dancing around, singing in the driveway while the cars are eight in the morning. It was like this. They, and he's making fun of the guy and just busting his balls. And it was kind of funny. Yeah. And it, and the guy was laughing. And I was laughing because I was like, this guy's like 50 years old. He's out of his mind. And he's yeah. out of his mind. And yeah. his kids are standing there looking like, this is our day. We see this yeah, all day. We see, yeah. We don't give a shit. We don't feel embarrassed. So it was kind of funny. Yeah. But yeah. But I already can go over the top, but but it, it was there's it something about him that's he's like a hyperactive guy, I guess, you know. Yeah, one of I mean, this is not obviously the same, but one of my friends growing up, his dad was one of these like outrageous dads like that. Right. And um like I remember one of the first times that I, I'm hanging out with my friend at school and then I go to his house and his uh his dad was like, Are you here to see my little girl? And I was like, uh what and he he doesn't have a little it's it's his son and i was like yeah because i didn't know yet right and then and then he goes he likes to uh and then he, he had a cell phone the old cell phone with the antenna that's permanently up and he goes here's my son he's playing with his little dick like, like, <laughs> but he's doing this in front of his son and his friends yes we're howling as yeah. friends we're teenagers yes and my friend's like looking at me he's like are you amused this is <laughs> this he's is like, my life. He's, this is what this is every day, and I was like, I go, yeah, dude, it's pretty fucking fantastic. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it is that energy. Yeah, it's not like a witty. It's just a a guy that just commits in this crazy way. Yeah, but won't stop. You won't stop. Yeah, but I wonder. I would love to hear the history of all the times he's done because he was just doing when he was doing that for in, in the at uh, the outside of the uh, hotel. He wasn't, there weren't a lot of people around. Yeah. I just happened to be coming out and maybe a couple other people. He wasn't performing for anybody except his family, himself, there's a, and those two valets. See, there's a part of that that you got to go like, man, however you want to spend, like that's kind of the purest comedian. Like the guy who goes, I'm here to make jokes and get laughs in whoever's around. Right. You know, like that's a true silliness factor to that. Like that the, that's right. Right. Like there, who's watching the valet? I'm just yeah, trying to make right. him laugh. Well, I was but, Robin Williams for all his faults, and there were plenty. Yeah. He was a guy that would grab anybody and just work them. Yeah. Like, you know, any stranger on the street would be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's a, that's like childlike almost, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Those guys can keep that silliness. Yeah. Yeah, mine went away a long time oh, ago. Oh, I never had it, yeah. I like to bust balls, but you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, in yeah. a different way. Like, yeah. I, like bu I love busting balls on people when they – you know, yeah, sure. In the streets and stuff, but <laughs> yeah, not yeah. not silly, more like you know, the silly breaking. stuff. Where you're like, because also there's something about that type of silliness where at a certain age you're like, how do you have this much energy for this shit? Right, don't right, need, right. Don't you need energy just to get through the day? Yeah, <laughs> like, I can I can interact with people, but I can't move. Right, right. I can do it like for, like that. <laughs> yeah. These guys are running yeah, around. Don't yeah. require me to do yeah. fucking squats yeah. to do, make you <laughs> yes. laugh. Yeah, dude. These guys still got it. <clears throat> All right, what? Because I've always wanted to ask you this. I remember the first one-man show that you did that was like pointed, like about something right. that wasn't just like, here's an act, like right. here, here's just jokes about stuff. And then you're, you're, you're actually, it's great because you're taking something that actually people don't know a lot. We knew we have a general sense of something like history of, uh, of this country, constitution. Right, right. And then you go like, no, I'm going to actually break down what, what this really is, but do it in an entertaining way, right. a truthful way and with humor. But it feels like, I, I feel like th now that you've done it and done it well and multiple times, it actually, what it did was it opens up that, that door for people to go, like, Oh, I want to do a, a version of that. So now you see people do things Good, yeah. like this, but I feel like you're the, 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 the guy well, that thanks. did it. Yeah. But yeah. But what made you like, it felt like at the time, like now if somebody does it, they're going, I'm going to do, I'm going to do an act, you know, about like the nuclear treaty. You'd be like, all right, right. Like this is a thing now. But, but what makes you first, it feels like a big risk I'm saying when you start it. No, because one of the things was I, had, I had done some one man show stuff before, but, but what really it is, is I watch comedians and I go like, I'll watch you. If I watch, I'm trying to think of a specific, uh, moment in your act mm -hmm. and so well there's one way you say the guy was when somebody's 
I'll try to, I'm paraphrased, but with the guy, when, if somebody's, oh, here's a perfect example. When you say, when there's a guy in overalls with no shirt on, that's the last person you're going to see. Yeah, right. Okay. So like, that's a hilarious line. But then I'm like, that's not just a hilarious line. Like that train of thought, if you wanted to go into, could be something so, like I always feel like comedians throw away genius lines. Yes. And I'm like, that's a whole th- theme. That's a thought. So I started thinking that way and I was like, I, I can't believe like, because a lot of times people will go, oh, that person's funny. I'm like, no, but what they're saying, there's so many little profound moments. So I'm trying to like uh, curate it so that people go, no, no, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about life on earth right now. Yeah. And I know people know that and they, you know what I mean? But it's still, I'm trying to make sure people understand. So a lot of times people do their act. There's like 10 profound things. Then they end on whatever their biggest laugh is. And I'm like, no, 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 no. There's got to be more of a theme there because- they're saying so many important things. So then I was like, I'm going to do theme shows. Theme shows. Yeah. But I, I feel like everybody should, yeah. I kind of feel like the the people who have done a version of this for a while are actually the the Europeans, right? Like, meaning not the same, same style show. It doesn't surprise me. But they will <laughs> they will do theme. Like, you when you do festivals, like if you go abroad and you right. do, like, you go, I'm um, doing, you know, the Edinburgh or Melbourne or something. You know, you arrive and someone will be like a, a local. They'll be like, "So, what's your uh, what's your show about?" And you're like, "My show? What do you mean? Right, it's a right. it's a series of jokes yeah. that have nothing to do with one another." Right. And they're like, "Oh, mine's about my dad." And you're like, "Your fucking hour is right." And and then you watch it and they're like, "Oh, it is." Yeah. Uh, so that's like a and then they have they are in the practice also of turning over that thing. So they do that show and then they're like, "My next show is about my last year in high school." And right. you're like, okay, wow. So that, but that that feels very, you know, like European to me, right? Um, but you you find it less frequently, I think, in the states. Well, I've never done Europe, which you've infuri- never done those festivals or anything. It infuriates me to no end, but I've never done Europe, and it just, I did when I did. Long story short, one of the reasons I did it was like I'm going to do every country, and then I'm going to go tour the world. Yeah, and it never happened. So it's just not meant to be. But when you say you do jokes or a series of random jokes that aren't connected, that's, I don't believe. Well, you're so right. So I'm saying if I look you're right. at any of your hours, yeah. I'll be like, well, what about this, this? And that's the part I feel like there's so much profound stuff you're going right. on you're right. that's not getting its full deserved attention. And I also feel like the the mark of, like when I watch somebody who's starting out, someone who's done it a little while, and then someone who's like a true veteran yeah. To me, the mark of I'm like, oh, this guy's good, is that he, when he gets to a good joke, he or she, excuse me, or they, uh, any of them, uh, they work the f- they work the whole thing out. Like they they work, yeah. they don't just go one funny joke about this. Right. They give you the whole thing, and then what when you're new, when you're starting out, you get, you're like, I got to laugh about that. Moving on. Right. And you you don't yes. you don't you don't like. Beat yeah. up the topic, and, it, and and it's 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 admirable, but it's a it's a mistake in certain ways. And you know, the first one I ever saw really squeeze the life out of it was Rich Jenny, if you remember him. Yeah, of he course. would take the subject and roll it into this thing, and it was really interesting to watch. Yeah, and it was great the way he did it. You know? He was fantastic. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was really good. He was really really good. And I, um, I've heard other great comedians go like, "Oh man, he like." when you saw him in a club or something, they're like, it was, people were actually like, you, you hear these superlatives thrown around, but like people were like exhausted but from laughing so hard at this guy. Like he was yeah, no, just. He, he had some really beautifully crafted bits, you know? Yeah. Fucking, I can't believe that. Yeah. But, but that's the kind of thing where I always feel like really what I'd like to do, even though it's, everything's too late now. What I'd like to be is the guy that, gets paid exorbitant amount of money from comedians to force them to craft their acts into what I want them to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This way I'm, you know, but the only problem with it is, which is, this is why comedians are the greatest. If I, whoever he respects said, Hey, this joke would work better with this line. 99% of comedians, 
Even an open mic would look at me like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, that you're totally that's right. Totally yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true. <laughs> and even that's if so you, somebody gives you a line, you still resent it. You do. Even if it's a great line. Yeah. You're like, God damn it. And of course, it doesn't help that an audience watch you do an hour, come up, and they all say, that one joke, like, you're the one that somebody gave me. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, that's yeah. so true. <laughs> so the difference funny. now is that, like, I, I feel like the longer you do it, you can go, like, if I do a set now and I've had a guy come up to me and go, uh, hey, you know that bit? And you're like, what? You're like, you know that bit? And you go, yeah. And they go, you know what um, What you're missing there? And you go, you start to go like, are you fucking out of your mind? Oh. And then they, they give you a line. And when it's, when it's notably bad, I yeah. go, no, thanks. I didn't think about that. I appreciate that, yeah. man, right? And then I just kind of yeah. walk away. But when, it's not when I go, that's great. It's when I go, oh, that's interesting. That to me is more the alarm that I go, Fuck, maybe I should. When I when I when it gives me a moment to pause and think about it, and and I go like, fuck, is that is that better? That's when I go, I'm gonna try your suggestion, even if your suggestion isn't the exact thing I'm gonna take. If I go, you just opened a door. Yes. That oh, that it always me, happens. Yeah. That's 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 when I'm gonna I'm gonna be that guy. I'm gonna start with Bert Greicher. Yeah, sure. And I'm going to start with Bert and I'm going to say, Bert, look, because Bert seems like the kind of guy that if I presented it correctly, yeah. he'd just fork over a boatload of cash. You could definitely get a lot of money out of him. <laughs> so You could get a lot of money. I'm just going to sit him down and go, Bert, I love what you, I love you. what you're bringing is something because he does bring a whole energy that's amazing. Yes. And, and a I'm lot of say, words. They're not all coherent, but that's there's right. a lot of words. And I'm going to say, Bert, here's what we're going to do with the act. And he'll yeah. be like, oh, I love this idea. What, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> say Bert shirt I, on or shirt off <laughs> the shirt comes off the shirt coming off is good it's a non-verbal thing that's really beautiful but what I'm saying is we're gonna we're gonna explore what it means the history of nudity and at the end the grand thing is gonna be you taking your shirt off I it's love gonna, it <laughs> Now, Bert, it's not going to be cheap. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 good, good. Yeah, tell us what kind of price range are we in here? Um, I mean, I guess for him, a new hour, a Bert new hour, a new hour. He's probably going to tour that for two years. Yeah, he'll make what? Just let's just bleep this part out. Oh, uh, more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll say, I'll say for a new hour for Bert for me. Oh wow, Jesus! What? <laughs> it's definitely no. It's, 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 no. it's good. It's good. Hey, hey, <laughs> Lots listen. of leaps. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll tell him later. <laughs> this is no time to be cheap. No, that's true. That's true. No time to be cheap. God, I think I like that reaction. <laughs> yeah. I like your reaction. Oh God, Jesus! <laughs> That's real money. Because um, <laughs> I think he would actually. He might. Oh, he might give it I to you. Yeah, I think you could do if it. If I could, if I could get him in the, in like a environment like the cellar. Yeah. For like an hour. Yeah. And just sit there in the right spot. I could probably get it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you. <laughs> yeah. You have to have a certain amount of food and drinks coming in. Like, we're, yes. but like, but like timed, you know, you're going to, you go like, and when I, you go, when I go <laughs> another water for me, be like, that's when you bring out the steak and the other bourbon and be like, and then I'm right after it closes, I'm going to give him the paperwork for the wire transfer. <laughs> but that's the beauty of today. Yeah. He could just really almost yeah. Venmo. I don't yeah. know if he could Venmo that much money. I don't think he could Venmo that, but no. <laughs> you could be like, as long as the deposit clears now, we can get started. Yeah. <laughs> It's very, I love the business plan. I think you as a consultant could make really I, fucking crazy money. I love it. Real crazy money. But not if people are going to br bristle like you just did over my, my fee. Well, because I'm thinking of my own fee. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to be like, hey, you're not doing fucking Bert shit to me, man. All right. You're going to be like, I help you come up with the, the pitch. Yeah. Like, I want to break. I want a discount. I want to break. Yeah. Let's cut that thing into fucking quarters. No, you know quarters. what I'll do? Here's how I'm going to do. I'm going to do like drug dealers. Yeah. I'm going to. Help somebody with one bit, and then if they're like, shit, what does he do that bit? Yeah. You know? If you help me fix this one bit that I have right now, yeah, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you a good check. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Well, be, be, we can't do it here. Oh, okay, fine. But as soon as this wraps, we'll talk about it well, at I, length. Yeah. But I might not be good at it like that. You know, I need a couple of days to ruminate usually. Yeah, yeah. No, you can ruminate on it. Yeah. 
It's a real fucking problem. It's all I talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I yeah. could probably help. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want money for it, but I want to. You know, yeah. maybe okay. you could just spread the reputation afterwards. And you know, yeah, because really, they if go, we're focusing in on Bert, it's like CQ. If we're focusing in on Bert, this is the way to do it. I help you with that bit. Then you casually mention to Bert, yeah. and then three months from now, in his head, he's like, "You know what? I got to do this." Here's thing. what happened. Here's what, here's how we'll do it. I'll fucking do this bit. They'll be like, "That bit was great," and I'll be like, "Well, you know." Quinn, yeah, he'll be like, really? I'm like, yeah, you, you fucking hooked me up. And then he's like, he's like, oh shit. <laughs> and then you give him the new price. No, no, we do it like Bernie Madoff. We set it up. We go. He's not really going to oh, talk to yeah, you. He's not. He'll be like, hey, <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, what's wrong with me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be like, Bert, no. I don't have time right now. Yeah, I'm working with Kevin Hart. This I got Matt Rife on the line. <laughs> and he's like, well, what about me? And I'm like, Bert, yeah. I'd love to get to you. He'll be like. All right, all right. Listen, all right. I'm going to put something aside this Tuesday. Yeah, there you go. And then they, then they, the uh, old go, hustle. We got to get him. You got to give him the fee, though. And he'll be like, "What's the fee?" And be like, "It's not. I mean, it's expensive. It's not like undoable. It's a it's right. A, guy's not fucking free." Well, first I say, you know, Kevin Hawes give me. Yeah, I know you don't have that kind of money. Right. And he'll be like, maybe I should say because the way you reacted to, I don't want to be thrown around. Right. <laughs> better right great great deal and then he'll be like what do i get for a <laughs> couple tags we should do a we should do a whole uh two bears one cave with you playing him and me playing myself oh yeah doing this that could be a whole other episode i know i used to you have to work on i have to work on my mouth breathing <laughs> oh my god call it this is i gotta oh my god hold on a second yeah, Bert, this is going to work. But really, I would with him, you could really get thematic. Yeah. Because True. he's got the crowd. They're in the vibe. They're in his energy. So are you looking for he themes? He can take them any way he wants. That's true. That is true. He's got great, great energy, too. Yes. So do you look for themes the way, like, you know, director, writer-directors go, like, I'm just searching for, I'm waiting for a story. And then they have a story. They're like, this is it. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. My last show was I. I was like I got. I started doing it, and I was like, "What is it? What is it?" Then I go, "I know what it is. I'm just gonna go the other way and make it all small talk and how important small talk is. And small talk is a run society. And small talk. And then after I did it, I go, "Ah, it just doesn't feel like it feels okay, but it's forced. Yeah. So now I got no theme. So I'm just trying to figure out my theme. Wow. Now when you're when you're working out, like, um, you know. Red State, Blue State, New right. York Story, Unconscious. Like when you're doing those, yeah. Can you practice, like, get those things in shape in the clubs? I have to. You have to. You have. There's to. no other option. Even unconstitutional. I was proudest because the minute those work in the clubs, those bits. Yeah. Then you're like, this is gonna work in a theater. And that's such a, um, like a a turn for the, an audience that's like watching, you know, right. six people in a row go up talking about. The subway, sure. blow jobs. Right. You know, I have kids that are acting like the, and then you come up and you're like mostly blow jobs, yeah. Mostly blow jobs. But the constant you know. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's just like, wait, are you are you really doing it? Oh, bit, believe like, me, I yell at the audience all the yeah. Oh, yeah, we're talking about the constitution. I have to literally say yeah. that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about the constitution right now. But and do then you find laugh. that like it's like that the thing about um I don't know, I feel like after the years you learn that you can reset an audience to meet you there. Yes. If you're like, this is what we're doing. It you, doesn't matter. You said it perfectly. Yeah. The crowd wants to laugh and the crowd will laugh on. They, they, they know about the constitution. Sometimes they know more than you do, you know? Yeah. But you got to reset and keep the couple of the assholes that are trying to change it. You have to put them in their, in line. That's the most, that's the only thing as you know, those people have to be stopped. Addressed. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. And you got to be, you know, funny, but very harsh. And, Put them in line because they'll try to bring the energy into whatever they want it to be, you know, and you can't have that. But yeah, the crowd is, if you make it, if you punch it up, they're there. Yeah. They like any subject. Yeah. Because I always, I feel like the the par the thing that I learned it with is following crazy energy. When yes. you follow crazy energy, your instinct is when you're like starting out is you're like, God, I guess I got to be big too, That's you know? Because right. like it, that guy was so big. Yes. Uh, and then you realize that actually you can go like, completely to the but you have to like you have to be 
Zen. Uh, secure in it. It's, secure. It can't be like a, a put on. You just well, kind of like, you settle in and you're like, that was that. And this is this. Well, Ray, Ray Romano, I always think of Ray Romano because we did, you know, strip shows and everybody's up there with their energy and wild and talking about, you know, young and single. And then this guy would go on last and the crowd, you know, late shows, five people being hilarious. Yeah. And then he goes on and he's like, I got two kids. I'm married. And people be like, what the hell is this? Yeah. And after two minutes, he went on last because he killed. Yeah. So he would just be and be so funny and just be hit, like you, what you just yeah. said, so secure. Like this is what I am. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the things in comedy that I feel like is one of the most important things is what you just said. It's, this is all you got. And if it's not enough, that's, you got to go somewhere else. I'm not bringing you somebody else. Yeah. I'm not bringing you a, a, a rock star. I'm me. And this is what we got. So let's either laugh or not. And yeah. I feel like, one of the most important moments in comedy is when you get to that point where you're like, I can't reach and be who you just saw. I'm never going to bring their energy on. Yeah. You. I'm me. I'm me. Yeah. This is all I got. Yeah. You're so right that there's that moment. And there's the moment where you, um, the first, like, I think when you first hit you, when you're, it's funny cause you're, you're obviously performing comedy to get laughs, but there's moments where you're on there and especially like in a big room where you're in the middle of something and you realize that everybody's listening and you're like, oh, they're all listening right now. Yeah, like a few thousand people are like listening and you're like, this is pretty crazy. That's crazy. Like this is, and also that's a good thing to get. Yes. People panic when they're not getting laughs. They're like, what should I do? But you're like, hey, use this. Use them being like, right. oh my God. Right. And take them somewhere, you know? Yeah, take them wherever you want, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I feel like, I'll give you, I feel like as a deposit, I'll give you. Okay. <laughs> For the bit. <laughs> now, I don't, like I said, I'm doing it like a drug dealer. Okay. Okay. I do this bit for free. Then we have the conversation. Meanwhile, if I can't even do it, who knows if it'll even work. Yeah. But if it works, then you're like, oh God. And you just casually mentioned it, Bert. Yeah. After, he'll forget this podcast after a month. He probably yeah. won't even listen. And, um. And then you just go, oh my God. Yeah, Colin, we talked about that bit. It's great. And he'd be like, what bit? And I'm like, oh, did I tell you that? It doesn't matter, but it was good, you know? Yeah. And, then, he's and like, then when he says, how much was it? You're like, I don't want to talk about money, right. which is a great line. Speaking of MTV, yeah. when you don't talk about money, there is no money, but you're not lying. <laughs> right, like, right. I don't want to talk about the money. <laughs> yeah. Money's not important. When we did MTV, we did remote control city. Girls auditioned. We had another girl, the other one had left, and they brought in this girl. Sophia Coppola, and they go, and that's Sophia Coppola, Alicia Coppola. So it's her name's Alicia. She's on the show. So they go, uh, are you related to Francis Ford? And she goes, I don't like to talk about it. They hire her. She's not related. She didn't lie. <laughs> she didn't lie. I don't like to talk about it. I'm not related. <laughs> She's the greatest. Yeah, that's hilarious. Goes, I don't like to talk about it. That's such a great one. She's the greatest. Yeah, that is brilliant. And she got hired. Yeah. And then, then you know, some execs like, it's pretty crazy we got Francis Ford Coppola. Oh, cool, cool. Go on. They're like, yeah. Here. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> um, all right. Listen, it's a real treat that you came in. Oh, thanks. I appreciate you being here. It's really fun. Uh, best pizza in New York? Where do you go for a slice? Well, Joe's, of course. I mean, Joe's? It's unbelievable. The one on Carmine, too. There's all good Joe's, but Joe's on Carmine. Is, is that a downtown? Yeah, right um, by the cellar. Are you, do you live nearby? I mean, I don't want to give away your address, but you live yeah. in the area? Well, I live, no, I live like down about 20, 30 blocks past that. But Oh, okay. Yeah, by all Wall right. Street right there. And have you been there, that area, a long time? Yeah. Yeah. I went to Joe's. Joe's used to be four doors up. I was there at the original Joe's. Wow. It was four doors away. They moved it to that place. Yes, because you are New York, man. Oh, I love, I mean. I know. When I, I wish I had been, my only regret is I wish I had been filming. I think about this all the time. From the time, from the 70s, I just wish I had been filming everybody and everything. Do you have, because my favorite thing, I, I love cities. I love being yeah. like, so when, when people go vacation, yes. you know, they go like, you want to go to the beach, you want right. to go to a thing. And I always pick big cities. Sure. I like to go to New York, Paris, London, like, because I, for me, the, what I get out of those, because they're always like, where do you go? I'm like, I just like the energy of me being too. in this. What's like a, a great day off, free day for you in New York? Like, is it just yeah, low key? just walking just around. Just walking around. Walking around. That's yeah. what New York, but let me give you, speaking of cities, so they just shot this new De Niro movie. Mm -hmm. Good friend like, of mine. Go ahead. But, yeah. Bob, yeah. Bob, 
So he plays the mob guys. Uh -huh. So anyway, it's set in the 60s, New York, 60s, Barry Levinson direct, 60s and 50s in New York. So they had to find the closest place that looks like New York in the 50s and 60s. Where did they shoot? Uh, I'll give you a hint. Okay. I'm asking you, where did they shoot? Cincinnati? Yep. For real? Yeah. No shit. Downtown Cincinnati. I guess. I don't know, but yeah. somewhere in Cincinnati. That's true. It does kind of suck. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, 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 no, it's like it's there is the, the thing about Cincinnati is you the feeling I whenever I go back to Cincinnati and you're and especially when you're downtown, you're always like, yeah, it's like this is almost there. Like you always feel like like three quarters of things have been done, you know, wow. and you're like, you know what I mean when you go. I Which always is get surprising to, they're German. You think you finished stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Over the Rhine. Yeah, over the Rhine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those Germans know what no, they're I mean, doing. No, I know what you meant. And you're right. They did a great job. We'll end on that. You can see Colin Quinn <laughs> at Colin. Go get tickets at ColinQuinn.com. <laughs> He's one of the best. Uh, thanks for coming, man. Thanks for we'll having We'll see you guys me. later. Bye. Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.